Be like a superstar. Famous people less like a superstar. I treat famous people like real people. I started as a photographer, I would say professionally, when I was 20. My brother's a fine art painter, heavily influence on me, and I couldn't paint, so when I discovered the camera, it was really easy for me to express myself creatively. Everybody's in the business of glorifying celebrities, so capturing them, it's already glorifying them by photographing them. So if I can get them a little bit more understated, I feel like it brings up the real. In 1997, I shot Tom York from Radiohead, most important picture of my career. In 2001, I shot Pharrell Williams for Peace Magazine. Again, very important picture. Colin Firth, a week before he won his Oscar, career moving pictures where that picture propels a whole new wave of clients, a whole new wave of people looking at my work. I think pivotal career changing pictures are more important than favorite pictures because they're all my favorite. The whole idea is make good stuff and share it and do it every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture with me. It's Cardi. Today we are talking about access points to the industry, how to get yourself into the industry, how to start working. Yes, we work for families. Yes, we work for friends. Yes, we get work through Facebook, some of us. But if you're trying to work for design firms, if you're trying to work for ad agencies, if you're trying to do campaigns, if you're trying to get into the fashion industry, if you're trying to be a high level product photographer, today's episode's for you. We are gonna talk about the creative industry, which is an incredibly broad sector. And it encompasses a variety of fields that are all centered around our creativity and creative talent. Creative talent runs the industry. It also has a massive design element. There's design on every piece of marketing that goes out there. The industry includes, but is not limited to, advertising, architecture, arts, crafts, design, fashion, film, music, the performing arts, publishing, research and development, software, toys, games, TV, radio, and video games. There's so, there's such a massive industry out there, the creative industry. So I think the thing that I should do first is break down some of the key roles within the creative industry so you can actually know who you should be talking to in the creative industry and what their title is and what they do. So I had to charge my pen. One second. Hopefully, hey, I got a little juice now. All right. Okay, so the first role that is incredibly important for you to know is the art director. The art director. That is the first role. An art director is responsible for the visual style and the image and images and design in magazines, newspapers, pro product packaging, as well as film and television series. They create the overall design and they direct others who are also working in the art department as far as artwork and layouts. So an art director, they're responsible for every concept and execution as far as the visual aspect of a project. So there's where the ideas and execution come from. So you have to imagine the art director often is who's hiring me. I get hired by art directors often. And also they select illustrators, they pick photographers, and they're responsible for the graphic elements and deciding the overall visual appearance. And 
Art directors have incredible skills. The skills that an art director has, if you have friends that are art directors, get close to them. They have a creative vision. They have leadership. They understand teamwork. They understand graphic design, photography, and sometimes they have an understanding of 3D design, copywriting. There's so much to the art director. Now, the art director really falls within the advertise. I mean, art directors work in every space, but specifically now, if you're talking about magazines, magazines have what's called a photo editor. They also have an art director, but because magazines are so photo driven, magazines have an art director that's responsible for the overall look and feel and design of the magazine. But there's a photo editor that's responsible specifically for the photography aspects of the magazine. And they're the ones that hire us. Photo editors are the ones that hire us for magazines. So they work with the art director and come up with ideas and then the photog the photo editor finds the photographers to execute the stories picks the photographs from the story and then passes those photographs onto the art director and the art director lays that work out into the magazine so this is number one and this is number two the photo editor and the art director are the two most important people that you guys need to actually start speaking to photo editors. And again, they have the same responsibilities as an art director would have only it's specifically within publishing. So that is photo editor, art director. The next big one is copywriter. Now for us, we're not going to be talking to copywriters quite as much. They're responsible for compelling written content for all the media that I spoke about, advertisements, websites, marketing materials. Their work is key in communicating a brand's messaging and they're trying to directly engage with a key audience. So they also work in tandem with art directors. They're usually in teams. Copywriters work with the art director and, and art direction. So they work together. They write clear, persuasive, original copy, adapting the style and the tone of the messages based on their specific target audience. They also edit, they proofread copy, and they understand the client specifications exactly. So the copywriter is really involved in the persuasion of the messaging. And for us as photographers, we have to wear so many hats. So it's important to understand what all these roles are because also we have to also write. We have to also be persuasive in our messaging. So it's important to understand what a copywriter actually does. So even if you're a photographer and you're not, we're not trying to be copywriters, we still need to have good writing skills. We still need to have good storytelling skills and we have to understand our target audience. If our target audience is the creative industry, is the fashion industry, is the advertising industry, is the product, high-end product photography industry, we have to learn how to write copy. We have to kind of be all of these hats that I'm speaking about as far as the creative industry, we have to be all of them for ourselves, which is trying and <laughs> sometimes tricky, but that's what a copywriter does. They have an exception, they, have a, they play a pivotal role in shaping the voice of a brand. So we also, as photographers, have to shape the voice of our brand. Copywriters craft messages that resonate with audiences. As photographers, we have to craft our messages to resonate with the chosen niche that we're working within. So understanding what these roles are really help us actually 
create content that's going to be received by the industry in the way in the way that we need them to receive it so that is copywriting the next big one is creative director oops that's not the right one creative director the creative director leads all creative at an advertising agency. They are the head. They're the head of the in-house marketing department or they are the head of the art directors. The creative director, art directors are down here and there's many of them. Obviously, AD means art director, C CW means co copywriter. So there are teams of art directors and copywriters, and they report to the creative director. The creative director is the head of the team. If you know some creative directors, that's a good thing. They oversee the entire creative process. They guide the team by brainstorming ideas. They help with the overall creative vision of the client and they ensure a high standard of visual execution. Everybody reports back to the creative director. There's also another role in here called SAD. And SAD is called senior art director. They're art directors, but they have seniority. They're higher than just a regular art director, but they are lower than the creative director. So. That's what a senior art director does. Obviously, in order to be a creative director, you ha they have to have strong leadership, creativity, and an excellent understanding of brand development. And they need experience in advertising. They need experience either being a copywriter, an art director, a senior art director. Like, one doesn't get to just walk in to the creative director position unless you're Virgil Abloh or Kanye West or someone that has established themselves in another role. So photographers, this is where we come in. Let's talk a little bit about the role of the photographer. You, your role. As photographers, we use our technical expertise, our creativity, and our composition skills to produce images, right? But we also have to do that for a specific audience. If we're generalists, if we're generalists, it becomes really hard to market yourself because you're just a photographer and Everybody with one of these is a photographer. If you want to be marketable, you have to be a specialist. Specialists have specialty tools, specialty skills, and specialty equipment. Like specialists get paid 10 times more than a generalist do. You know, if you have a $30,000 car, yeah, you just hire anyone to shoot your car. If you have a quarter of a million dollar car, you hire a car photographer. You hire the best car photographer you can afford because you want to deal with somebody who's dealt with quarter of a million dollar cars before. You don't want to hire somebody who it's their first day, you know, specialist. So obviously we're also responsible for editing. We're responsible for post-production. We have to have technical skills, lighting skills, patience, attention to detail and strong networking skills like in order to release yourself to the industry as a photographer, you have to be ready. You only get one chance to make a first impression. So be ready or as ready as you can be. You have to be ready. And the, you're ready when you have 25 um, pieces of value, 25 images, 25 spe niche specific pieces of work that are undeniable. You got to be undeniable. Competition is fierce. 
Once you got 25 image that are undeniable for a specific audience, you're ready to start. You're not, you're not going to ever be a hundred percent ready ever, 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 ever. You're not going to be a hundred percent ready to start ever. But if you got 25 images specifically ha tailored to a specific niche, you're ready to go reaching out to people. Now imagine if you also shot video and you were a one person video machine like Daniel Schiffer. Daniel Schiffer is a creator on YouTube and he's also from Toronto. Funny, so many incredible photographers, creators, YouTubers come from this city right here. So, um, Daniel Schiffer, he had an idea. He wanted to make a spot. This is how you get into the industry. Daniel Schiffer started on YouTube just making mock commercials, fake commercials. So this most recent video that he did was a fake commercial for Mr. Beast's Feastables. And he came up with an idea to have the bar break and then go back and break and the logo, the Mr. Beast logo spin and it's like Feastables. So he knows how to do After Effects, which he taught himself. He knows how to do some amazing videos, which he taught himself how to do. He does green screen, knocks up the background, taught himself how to do all this stuff. Made a free commercial for Mr. Beast. Made a, made a YouTube video about him making this free commercial for Mr. Beast. He just sent that commercial to Mr. Beast. Saturday, Mr. Beast drops a new video. I just watched Mr. Beast's video Saturday and Daniel Schiffer's Feastables commercial was the spot that Mr. Beast used for Feastables. It has 56 million views already. Like he did a mock-up ad for a known product, for a known creator. And if it was, imagine if it's good enough, the creator might use it, might show it, and you might now start doing spots for that creator. It's exactly what happened for Daniel Schiffer. And now he's doing spots for Mr. Beast. So you can do this. You just have to be undeniable. You just have to be doing undeniable. So imagine the same thing that happens with photography, you can do with video. If you're a one person video maker, Choose a product. Choose a product that's within your niche that you could play around with. And rather than just picking up like some nonsense, oh, I have this. Oh, okay, I'm going to shoot a thing of my memory card. It's like, don't just, oh, I have a, I have a can here. I'm going to just try to shoot this can. Oh, oh, I have this here. Okay, I'm just going to try to shoot. It's like, no, no, be specific. Be hyper targeted on what product that you could shoot. Like, and then maybe send that spot, that video spot, that little cool edit that you, you're you using that product. Send that to the person's social media account that has a 100,000 followers, the business that has a 100,000 followers. And like they might use it. You might not get a nickel, but you'll get exposed to their audience and you're now audience jacking and they're going to, they're going to use your credit. They'd be like, Hey, look at this cool spot. That's just shot by at X at Y Z, you know, like you can do this. You can do this. You honestly can, but don't be afraid to create spec work. That's doing work to, spec to specifics for a specific brand that didn't specifically hire you to do it. <laughs> spec work and then send it. That's what Daniel did. And he just got like, you know, 56 million impressions on a YouTube video. Plus like, it's just going to blow him up. It's actually genius. And this is how you do it. He does it for all kinds of brands. He just chose Mr. Beast for this particular one, but he's done it for all kinds of drink, beverage, beer brands and gotten work because of it. So the role of the photographer is very much the same as the role of the videographer. And as a content creator in 2021, 2024, 21st century, 
<laughs> you can actually do both. You can actually do both. You can do photography and video, and you can create a style that's uniquely yours, and you can create spec work, and you can do it for a specific niche or a specific, specific client specifically. Okay, so there's also obviously design. Design is a huge part of the industry. Um, we'll call it graphic design. Graphic design, it's a huge part. And they also are responsible for so much of the industry. Keep in mind that like only a certain percentage of ads or marketing is photography. Some ads are illustration. Some are photography. Some are video. And then even some are design focused, which is just color and text. So as far as the industry, you understand like if you're only doing photography, if you're only doing photography, as far as all the work that's happening out in advertising, you're only, you only have access to a part of the pie. Once you add video as something that you also do, oh my God, now you have, you're dominating, you're dominating like media because you're, oh my God, now add writing we have to think about our own business the same way that the industry runs. We have all of these elements, all of these hats that I'm talking about, these are all aspects of the industry, but we have to art direct our business. We have to art direct our business. We have to have ideas and execute them. We also have to be our own photo editor. We have to curate our own stories and put together our own stories. We also have to be a copywriter. We have to be the creative director of the whole business. And we also have to know how to work with these people. Obviously, we have to be a photographer, but we need to leverage video because video is a weapon. We also have to have an understanding of graphic design. So many photographers, like their web presence is so bad because they have no graphic design sense, none. So you got to do this kind of research if you're trying to work within the industry because the industry knows. Like, look at this little Cardi Method logo. That's graphic design. I did that myself. All my logos, everything I do. But it's because like my behind the picture logo, this little logo right here. I designed that too. My eye, all of that. Like, I have design sense because that was part of photography school. When I went to photography school, there was design class. And I learned about design in contemporary culture. And how design and photography work together. Too many photographers just think about photography. But if you don't understand how photography and design work together, it's hard for you to work in the industry because... That's all the industry is, is your work working within this ecosystem of copywriting, art direction, and concepting, you know? Okay, so graphic designer. Keep in mind, a graphic designer is doing logos. Graphic designers make logos. I have a very unique logo. My, my logo, um, this dot matrix logo here, I had my coach made this for me, my um, creative coach. And he's an art director. He's a senior art director. He's a creative director. He's like, <laughs> he's a creative. Um, so <laughs> I like logo, I didn't trust uh, this logo. This logo is far too important. I can make assets. These are like assets. But a logo that that important, that one I farmed out. So understand that graphic design it also is your logo. And the strongest logo 
the strongest logo is just text right there stevecardi.com text learn how to work with text just simple text and that's where that's where it starts like this book just simple simple copy simple Le learning how to lay out a book spines intro pages you know things like this i gotta move this 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 kind of design sensibility being able to lay out pages like this this is such an essential skill and it's graphic design and I mean, thank God we don't have to do UX design, but there's lots of people who do UX design, which is interface. And that, that has to do with like how our websites work, where the buttons are and all of this stuff, all of these things up here, this, this is UX design, all of this stuff up here. And this, and this, and this, this is all UX. Interface, user experience. So understanding, understanding like we also have to have a user experience, a user experience when it comes to our website. Let's go, Angel. Welcome to photo reviews. Let's go, Angel. And Rod Ligo, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Rod Ligo, uh, you gotta give me um, that pronunciation, but welcome. I'm glad you're here. So we also have to have an, have an understanding of UX because our our work, our websites, is all UX. So we have to have an understanding of that. Like this, this is user experience how easy it is to navigate your website, how you can just push arrows and go left and right, use the arrows, or you can go over here and click this, go left and right, but I prefer to use the arrows. And you can see when you use the arrows, when I use the arrows on the keyboard, these arrows disappear. That's UX. As soon as I start using the arrows, those disappear. So, Understanding user interface and understanding that that's a role within the industry. Know that like if that's a role within the industry and your website isn't up to par, there's UX designers like looking at your stuff, you know? So this is why I talk so much about industry standards. There's, there's, there's ways that we have to do things in order to fit within the industry. The industry doesn't fit within us. We have to fit within the industry. So... Also, directors, film directors, commercial directors. Oops. Imagine film production. Imagine video production. Commercial directors. What Daniel Schiffer did is he shot and directed a commercial and edited a commercial and did after effects and like one person show did all of these roles in order to get his work in front of the right person and that got him 60 million impressions and a job so we're all directors we're all the directors of our own career. And the more that we understand that we are not just photographers, we are actually directors. Don't be afraid to like dip your toe into a picture that, oh my God, it moves. Oh my God, I'm a photo that moves right now. Don't be afraid to take that camera that you have and switch it from stills to video and push record and then try to tell a story. Don't be afraid of that. Understand the photographers that are doing that are advancing 
10 times faster than you are, 10 times faster. If you're afraid of doing that, know that everybody's doing this. Everybody's utilizing every tool available to us in order to promote us as photographers. Every tool available, every tool available. If you're just using your photography to promote your photography, you're not using every tool available. You can write, have a blog, have a newsletter, get a sub stack. I talk about this every episode, make videos. YouTube is free. Why do you see so many photographers at all kinds of different levels at my level? I've been doing it for 33 years on YouTube, but also brand new photographers on YouTube. Why? Because it's an incredible marketing tool. It's the world's biggest search engine owned by it's, it's Google. It's the video side of Google. So you can be found, you can be found. And if you have a newsletter or an email list, those people are asking for your propaganda. So you get to write persuasively and send it to them, which equals work. So you have to lean in and use all aspects of your skill sets. And we have to remember we're all directors. Understand that as a director, you have to choose the cast members. You have to understand production design and the creative aspect of filmmaking, but you have to choose the cast members that are going to be in, in your photographs. And you have to create the production design of what is going to be behind your photograph, your photographs, your subjects. And you have to come up with all the creative aspects of making that image. You understand you're doing, you're a director, you're directing the, th you're directing this. If you're making photos, you are a director. If you're taking photos, you're an observer. Would you rather observe or direct? Because understand the things that you see that you think are very unique to you. Other people, if they were there, they would see them as well. Yes or yes. And if they had a camera, they would make very similar photos to you because you're taking photos and not making photos. Yes or yes. But if you have an idea and you execute the idea, what are the odds of someone else having that same idea and executing their idea in the same way that you would? It's pretty rare, pretty hard to when you're executing ideas to imitate. So if you want to make unique work, you have to be the director of your life and the director of your whole experience. And understand part of the industry is fashion. There's so many photographers that want to be fashion photographers. So know that, oops, know that fashion design is such an integral part Oh my word, here we go. The fashion industry and getting access to a new or young and up and coming fashion designer could change your world. Like meeting and shooting for the right designer that ends up going on to be Marc Jacobs or goes on to be like pick your favorite designer Fashion designers create original clothing, accessories, footwear. They sketch designs, they pick fabrics, patterns, and they give instructions on how to make their products exactly. And they're responsible for trends, staying updated with the current everything and understanding fabric, fit, construction, style. Fashion is cool. And I started as a fashion photographer. You have to have artistic ability, creativity, and a strong sense of style if you want to be in the fashion industry because everybody in the fashion industry is all style. Sometimes no substance, but some are all style and substance. Some are all style, no substance, but such is life <laughs> in every industry, really. So if we're trying to get in the fashion industry, there's a couple different ways. Fashion designers 
hitting up fashion designers is the first way. The second way would be um, modeling agencies. And the agency model is the way that I went. I can't even write here. Modeling agencies is the way that I went. Um, but you, ha if you're trying to shoot fashion, you need to shoot legit models, not wannabes. And like wannabe models are, um, that girl who says she's a model, but she's a size 12 and she's done nothing but photo shoots. You can pay for photo shoots, eh? but it doesn't make you a model. What makes you a model is you have an agency, an agent who represents you and a portfolio and you go out on castings and other photographers want to photograph you for campaigns. That is a model. They have books, but most people who call themselves models are just people who've been in front of the camera before more than once that are girls but they rarely know anything <laughs> about anything. So watch who calls themselves a model. There are absolute models. And, and again, the difference between um, like girlfriend cute, I always say there's girlfriend cute and then there is model cute. So I'm gonna go to IMG models to just show you what agency girls look like this is img now plus size is definitely starting to break out and become more predominant in the industry but if you want to look at what portfolios look like if you want to look like see what tests look like you have to go to agency websites like img they're one of they represent kate moss like the biggest models in the world like this is where you go to see like to see um models so let's look at new york let's look at women so you get to see this is what agency girls look like Agency girls. Agency girls look like less than 1% of 1% of the population. Agency girls. This girl's 5'11". So this is an agency girl. You see? She's got tear sheets. She's a model. Legit model. So shoot this type of work getting into magazines that's next oops that's next once you shoot this type of work getting into magazines that's next so and again it's not it's not just females you can shoot men if you if you want to shoot men men tons so then you get to see what male models look like Look at this guy. What a look. Oh, I love this guy. He looks like a badass. Imagine how much work this guy gets. And look at the editorial. If you want to shoot fashion, if you want to shoot editorial, you see all the things that I say using space. Look at the headspace. They're shooting scenes. They're telling stories. This is all the stuff that you hear me say so often mix full length with headshots and three quarter and like this is what a portfolio looks like and learn how to shoot the hero picture learn how to shoot the hero picture so if you're trying to be a fashion photographer if you're trying to get into the industry and you're not looking at agency sites it's why your work doesn't look like it's from magazines because you're not looking at what model portfolios look like because that's the first route to getting into a magazine is you test models.
test models in a way like you're shooting for magazines already and then these models go to the magazines with their portfolios and they have your portfolio your stuff in there and they're like huh who shot this and it's like steve cardi and it's like oh cool blah 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 and this that's another one steve cardi hmm interesting this one steve cardi okay and then they write down steve cardi and then they look at my shit. Next thing you know, I'm in the office talking to the art director and talking about what I would shoot for them. So if you want to be in the fashion industry, that's how you do it. It's literally go to fashion designers. And how you would go to a fashion designer is I would do models first, shoot models first, and then you get connected with the new designers by working with the models. And then you start the, mo the new designers see the work that you're doing on models with their clothes and then then you now start shooting for young designers and then that designer blows up and they take you with them like there's all kinds of ways into the industry but if you're not taking big swings like this or at least trying you're not going to get anywhere you know so all of the roles that i talked about today all of the roles are all critical in order to like understand what what each person what each title does within the industry i talk specifically about advertising a little bit about fashion but understand that as creatives we have to wear all of these hats we have to wear all of these hats and each one of these roles plays a critical part in the creative industry and it makes it dynamic it makes it diverse for photographers and creatives, us understanding the, these roles provides insights to how our potential career and how collaborations are going to actually happen within the industry in the future. Like breaking into the advertising industry, breaking into the magazine industry, breaking into the fashion industry for a photographer, it's going to be challenging. But I have strategies. I have strategies. I actually have 20 strategies, 20 strategies for how you can break into the industry so if you have a notebook now would be the time because i'm going to rapid fire 20 ways that you can break into the advertising and magazine industry um number one should i write them maybe we'll write them number one strong portfolio If your book, if your book is weak, you're not going to get work. And I say book because that's industry term. Book. Your portfolio is called your book. Um, if you work in the fashion industry. Everybody in the industry, if you say, do you want to see my book? They know that you mean their portfolio. So you, if you're trying to get into the fashion industry and you're asking to see, may I see the model portfolios, please? No, no. You say, can I see that girl's book? Does you have a book? Can I see your book? And photo shoots are not called shoots. They're not called shoots. They're called tests. So if you're trying to call a modeling agency, the term is you say, hey, I'm a new shooter. Um, and I would say this, not photographer, not photographer. I would say, hey, I'm a new shooter. I'd love to test. I'd love to test some of your girls. And then you say, can I come in on a go-see? What's a go-see? You're going to see somebody. But photographers go on go-sees. Photographers have go-sees. So the term would be, hey, 
I'm a new shooter in town. I would love to come by for a go-see so I can see some of your model's books so maybe I could do some testing for you. Now, if you say, hi, I'm a new photographer and I was wondering if I could come into your agency to have a meeting and sit down with you and look at some model portfolios and discuss doing photo shoots. <laughs> They're going to be like, this person doesn't know a thing. They're not even speaking the right language. You understand? You said the exact same thing. You said the exact same thing. You might need to rewind that and play that back again. Hey, I'm a new shooter. Could I come by for a go see? And maybe we can, maybe you can show me a few books of some of your new faces so I can do some testing um, for their books. I'd love that. Maybe you could help me meet some new designers so I could do some work for them. Does this guy, does this help you? Does this help you? Liza says that she's testing for two agencies. <laughs> There you go. And again, I, I, so I've been asked to add some lingo stuff because the lingo is so much part of it. It's so much a part of it. And if you don't understand the roles, if you don't understand the lingo, how are you going to dance in this world? You have to understand the, the lingo. So number one, portfolio, create a strong portfolio. That is the first way is your book. So this is number one, strong book. And your book has to be niched. Heavily niched. It has to be style. It has to be technical. And it has to be <laughs> undeniable. <laughs> yeah, that's your book. That's your book. All of these, all of these books fall into that category. I think these are all undeniable, undeniable. I can just, I feel like I could just open to any pages in this book and it's undeniable. That's how you have to be. If you're looking at my fashion photography, I want to look at my fashion stuff. Sorry, I'll just move this. You want to look at my fashion book or this is an old book but if you want to look at fashion books undeniable has to be this is old work so uh, like all of our work has to be undeniable and it's a book. Specialize. That's the next thing. If you're not specialized in a niche, like you're, I said that right here. So specializing. Meaning there's three umbrellas. People. Places things and under people fashion portraits editorial um uh there's so many things <laughs> to the list <laughs> under places interiors architecture real estate blah 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 do the list under things product photography um uh product photography uh car photography anything that's a thing. There's tons of those. So you pick a niche under one of those umbrellas. You can also stack niches. You can do many of these. You can do like, you can do many of these under the same niche. Like I do. I do many. I stack niches. Under places, you can stack niches. Interiors, real estate, um, architecture, photography, like there's a bunch of stuff. You can stack them. And then under things, you shoot fashion accessories, you shoot food and drink, you shoot beverage, like like there's so like you can stack your niches but it starts getting hard when you start doing this where you shoot something in the people niche and something in the places niche or something in the people niche and something in the things niche when you're trying to do this that's causing confusion that's causing confusion so sit, wait until you're 10 years in before you start doing that 
takes time for you to do that. I would just do I would just do this first before you add a second. You got to master one one of these niches before you dance into a second one. So specialize. That's the second. Um, develop a distinct style. Style is how we see with the camera. Like that is our swag. Like literally, that's how we see with a camera. And like when I write my signature, like that style, like that swag, how you write is how it's like, that's unique. No one else can do that. So how we see with the camera is also unique. So you have to cultivate that unique style and you have to make your work instantly recognizable, instantly recognizable. I'm going to show you how powerful style is. I'm going to show you how powerful style is. I'm going to show you a photo and you're going to, oops, you're going to tell me who shot this photo, which is like, I'm going to just flash it. I'm going to flash it for two seconds. I'm going to flash it for two seconds. We'll do a split screen. Do it like this. Who shot this picture? Who shot that photo? Right there. I'm going to give you three seconds in chat. Um, do I have the controller for you guys to control my stream today? It's not on. Sorry. So who shot that photo right there? Who shot it? One more time right there. Who shot that photo? <laughs> who shot that photo? You know, that photo was shot by Karsh, Yosef Karsh, one of the most distinct styles in the industry. Yosef Karsh, he shot this photo. He shot this photo. He shot this photo of Mother Teresa. He shot this photo of Andy Warhol. He shot the queen. If you are in a British Commonwealth, he shot the queen. All of our money has Yusef Karsh's his photos on it. This is, my goodness. <sighs> Martin Luther King. So understand this is style. I'll show you another one. I'll show you another one. I'll show you another one. It really quickly, like, let's see who shot who shot this photo i'm gonna give you let's see who shot um who shot this photo quickly quickly who shot this photo anyone 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 who shot that photo you guys know that off like boom, 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 Andy Leibowitz right there. This tells you the power of portraits. It tells you the power of style. It tells you the power of style. I just showed you two, boom, like that. You're like Andy Leibowitz. I showed you another one, Karsh, style, style. I'm gonna show you one more to show you how important style is how important style is. This is the last photographer. Oh, come now, stop doing that. There we go. Okay. Images. Oh, that's the picture. Who shot this photo? Who shot that photo? Anyone? Anyone? Who shot this photo? Anyone? Anyone? Avedon, of course, Dick Avedon. Like this is style. Style is the most important thing that we have. St 
style. Dick Avedon, one of the most stylish shooters. Marilyn Monroe by Richard Avedon. Look at that haunting photo of her. Richard Avedon. Richard Avedon's American Midwest. He is the definition of the powerful portrait and style. So style, if you want to get in the industry, style. Stop messing around with your distinct style. It has to be instantly, instantly recognizable. Instantly. I'm going to give you one more. I'm going to give you one more. Recognizable style. Who shot this photo? <laughs> Recognizable style. Who shot that photo? Recognizable style. Who shot this photo? Style. <laughs> so we have to also be finding that recognizable, undeniable us. We have to also find it. It's critical. We have to have also our style. So that's the next thing. Style. I'm going to rapid fire these because we're starting to get out on our hour. Okay. The next thing, network. You got to network relentlessly. Network, which means you can't be afraid to go outdoors. You need to network, 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 and understand that that's industry events. That's um, workshops, seminars, online networking, like if you're not in my Discord, my Discord is a great way for you to practice networking. It's an incredible way for you to practice because you're starting with networking with other photographers, other people who are trying to do exactly what you're doing and you're learning and you're literally sharing your work. You're looking at other people's work. You're seeing where you are on the scale of the industry. We used to do this with photography school. I went to photography school. I went in and I was like, huh, I'm better than most of these people here get to know so it's good to check in and go into communities and see like okay I'm better than I actually thought that I was or I'm not quite as good as I thought that I was and I need to actually up my skills because now I'm in a community that everybody is better than I am so you always should be in a community where you're not the best in the community be in communities that are like better than you so you can raise up with them all right so network network not just online but in person don't be afraid to go up and say hey i noticed that you were talking about x y and z i'm a photographer can i show you some stuff maybe you can tell me about some of the things more that you're working on so maybe there's something that we can do together like don't be afraid to talk to people it could lead to mentorships collaborations and job opportunities People use social media poorly and photographers hate social media, but we have to use social media. It is basically direct access to absolutely everybody in the industry. Social media gives us a main line to every single person. Everybody has an Instagram account. So by using Instagram, LinkedIn, Behance, we can use that to showcase our work, but we can also use it to connect to people who we want to work for. If we're constantly posting high quality work, we're going to attract a high frequency audience. And then once those people were, we get someone following us, here's a thing. How many people do you have following you? Like I have a lot of people following me on Instagram, but one thing that I've heard one of the creators that I follow, he's a genius businessman. What he does is he goes on Instagram, he goes into his like recent or like his uh, his new fall. And then every single one of them, he goes, he DMs them and he's like, hey, thanks for following me. I'm just wondering if there's anything that I can do to help you with. Are you following me because 
you're interested in my photography services or are you following me because you're interested in my photography education? How can I help you? Every single person who follows this guy, that's what he does. So I'm going to start doing that. And if you imagine, if you have 100 followers, that's 100 leads. And really think about it. Social media is people opting in to see your stuff. They're opting in to see your stuff. And guess what? On Instagram, only 20% of the people who opt in to see your stuff actually see your stuff because of the Instagram alg algorithm. And especially if you're inconsistent with your posting. So what you could do when you make a new post is you could DM everybody and say, hey, I just posted this new thing. I hope it brings you value. Or you could bring value to your followers via DM and start building relationships with the people who follow you. If you do that and start getting comfortable doing that with your own followers, you'll start getting comfortable reaching out to people who aren't following you that you could bring value to and start bringing value to them. If you brought value to one person online every day, I guarantee you'd have one new client per week. That's 52 clients per year. All you need to do, like we've forgotten that we're hunter gatherers. We just post and do this. Post to Instagram and do this. Oh no, this we also do this. We do this. We death scroll. Like we're not hunting for people who could we could be working for. We're just scrolling. Like use the explore page, search art director, search photo editor, search like the kind of things that like like whatever your niche is, if it's small business, if it's restaurants that you want to work for, if it's hairstylists, if it's fashion designers, use social media to search for them, then follow them, then start liking a couple of their posts. Don't be obsessive, but start liking some of their posts, making comments on their posts. And then after a week of doing that, then DM them because they're going to see your name and they're going to recognize that's a person who's been commenting and engaging in my content over the last week or two weeks. They'll take your DM. But if you just start DMing them and being like, I want to do a photo shoot, like you can't just smash the plane down on the ground. You have to gradually land the plane. And how you do that is by leaking value to people for free before you ask them for money, before you ask or offer them something. You got to give them value first. So use social media. We're actually hunters. And, and, and fortunately, we just make traps. We don't, we make traps. Our website's a trap, right? It's a trap to catch, to, to catch clients. So we make traps and our social is another web or net or trap, but like that's passive. But we also have to be active and active is us as the hunter and we have to hunt and gather potential clients and then reach out. So many people get nervous here. I got nervous at this point, the reaching out. I was okay at hunting and gathering, but I was horrible at reaching out. So I'm going to start making more content on how to effectively reach out to people. I have a video on my channel. It's called, has a hand like this and a stop sign that says five ways to like five key steps to cold call someone or to reach out to somebody you don't know. Worth watching. All right. So use social media. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. I used it horribly, but if you use it properly, not just to be a net, but also a place to hunt, now you're winning. Next thing. Um, Offer to assist established photographers. If you want to be a pro, there's a couple of ways to go. Number one, just start. Oops, that's not the right screen at all. Number one, just start. Just start. Okay, just start. The only thing is, is if you're just starting, you're blind. So it's going to take you a lot longer to get to this finish line. Now, if you have another pro who is here further to the finish line than you are, and you attach yourself to him, now as he levels, you level. As he levels, you level. So when you assist somebody who's doing it, 
just ahead of you, just ahead. What they, what they learn, they teach you and you can learn by observation. So when you assist, that's assisting. This is why assisting is so important. Assisting, you get to see clients. They're not yours. Oops. You're, they're your, the person who you're, I'm not saying you're talking to them or stealing them, but you get to see clients and you get to see client relationships. And you get to see how your, the person who you're working for deals with their relationships with their client. Next, you get to be seen. You get to be seen by clients and you get to also develop your own micro relationships as I'm the assistant of Cardi. Now, Jay, who's my assistant, has gotten, Jay gets easily a job every other month because I don't shoot a lot of things. I say no to more things than I say yes to. So because I say no, sorry, I don't do that. Sorry, I don't do that. I don't do that. But I have someone who will. I, I, I say, I'm sorry, that's not the kind of photography that I do. But my assistant, Jay, he's your man. Or I'll say, I'm sorry, that's not the kind of budget. I, my budget is like four times higher than that. But if that's your budget, you call my assistant, Jay, he'll take care of you. So I offload jobs to Jay continuously. So because Jay is my assistant, not only does he make money, and I pay Jay extremely well when he works with me, not only does he make money, but he also makes money by proxy. By proxy, because I trust him. And I know that he does things the way that I do it. So although he's not me, he is a lighter version of me. And he's working on being his own full entity. So when you assist, you get clients by proxy. Next thing, you get to leverage the relationship that the photographer had with that client. And you get to say, I was Cardi's assistant. So now you're getting to leverage reputation. You're leveraging reputation because I have a three decade reputation in the industry. So someone being my assistant, now they're leveraging my reputation because although people don't know you, they know me. So you're like, hey, I'm a photographer. Oh yeah, cool, cool. It's like, well, I was Cardi's assistant. And they're like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Like it's suddenly now they don't know you but they know who you worked for. Now, oh, now you're validated. So imagine being like, hi, I'm Rob Frank. It's like, oh, cool, hi, Rob. I was Annie Leibowitz's first assistant. It's like, oh, hi, Rob. Like, do you understand? Like assisting the right photographer gives you leverage. It gives you leverage over people who are coming straight out of photography school, people who are just learning on YouTube. Like it gives you leverage. So. This is the next thing is like you leverage who you've assisted to leverage you in the industry. Like you send out an email and it's like, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'd love to do the blah, blah, blah. I'm also Avedon's first assistant. It's like, come on in. Do you know what I mean? So that's why assisting is important. Next, approaching local businesses. You have to understand local businesses can't afford advertising agencies. So this is why you hear me talk so much about local and small business. They can't afford ad agencies, but they need all the roles that I talked about within the industry, art direction, creative direction, copywriting, all that stuff, photography, video, they need all of it. And guess what? As a creative, as a photographer, as a 21st century content creator, you can provide that for small business. You could provide advertising agency services for small business, calling it photography and video services, calling it social media management. Like you can be all of that for local businesses. In fact, you've heard me say before, the one person business model for photographers, the 21st century photographer isn't a photographer anymore at all. He actually, or she has 
bridge the gap of understanding from being just a photographer to being an idea generator, an idea executor, a writer, a storyteller, a video maker, someone that brings value to every table that they attend. The new photographer isn't just a photographer anymore. And if you think like that, now you can go at local business and bring value that is it can't be it can't, it's undeniable you can bring undeniable value if you understand how to make photos video and copy like once you master that now you're a 21st century creator and if you can attach value to everything below your video, your your photography, and the words, your messaging. Practice on local business. Practice this value on local business. Create transformations for local business because that's what we're trying to do. We're not selling our service. We're selling the transformation that will happen after people work with us sell the transformation and people will pay a million dollars for a transformation. They're this now and they're going to be this after people pay for transformations. That's why girls get their boobs done. That's why they inject stuff into their face. It's absolutely ridiculous, but they're, they pay for a transformation. Is it a wise transformation? <laughs> Just ask any guy. No, please don't. Please stop injecting stuff into your face. But Girls pay for that transformation. So people pay for transformations. So if you can create transformations for local businesses, you can create transformations for magazines, for advertising agencies, for anybody. So local businesses. Next thing is submit work to magazines. You have to submit, you know, you look at every, at the bottom of every magazine and it says, we accept manuscripts, um, photos, video, like we accept, send your transcripts, manuscripts, photographs, like magazines accept submissions. They do? Yes. Every magazine at the bottom of the masthead, they accept submissions, submit work to magazines, look for magazines that accept pitches especially those that align with your style or your niche getting published even if it's in a smaller magazine is an incredible stepping stone because you know what magazines have they have this thing that says photo by oops i can't even spell my name steve cardi at the bottom of the photo guess what people just see your ad see your photo, Google you, and then hire you. Like getting published in a magazine and then that magazine has a distribution of like 50,000 to 250,000 um, episodes or, or prints. Like they make that many copies of the magazine and then that goes out and it says photo by Steve Cardi on that. What? Shooting for magazines, we should do it for free. It's literally advertising for us. So magazines, and once you get good at shooting for magazines, like I talk about, like <laughs> for about eight minutes, I get 1600 for a portrait. And what they get is three finals. Three finals. Like, so... It took a long time for me to get to the point where my rates were like that. But when I'm shooting editorially from shooting for magazines, like a cover, it's like, oh, $2,000 for a cover. Okay, cool. I shot that. Unfortunately, I didn't have that much time to shoot that cover because the business person or the executive or whatever was super busy. So I got my assistant to stand in and he sat there for like an hour while I did all my setup and blah, blah, blah. And then the guy came, bang the cover. Like editorially, and shooting editorially, let me just find a couple of um, editorial covers here. Shooting editorially is is one of the like, it's the best way to wait. It's the best way to get work. 
Like I love shooting for magazines and I shoot so many people for magazines. And it's like, after a while, you develop a style for how your work looks when you shoot for magazines. And after a while, it's like, you have like an editorial look. And after a while, you're shooting spreads and covers. And it's like, you look here and you see photo by Steve Cardi, you know, like, like you get front masthead billing, you know? So this is why shooting editorially, it, it's so, it's so important, so important. So, but again, it's possible. Let's get into another. Um, so you can submit work to magazines. You've heard me talk about the self-directed project. Shoot self-directed projects. So, like, if you're going to submit work, what would that work be other than a personal self-directed? Oops. Oh, there it is. Self-directed projects are something that it's an assignment that you give yourself. And it's ongoing. And it's ongoing. So self-directed, like I have several self-directed projects that I'm working on at any given time. And these self-directed projects often start as personal work. But the thing that's crazy is that personal work can become your professional work. Personal work can become your professional work. And Imagine this is a still, but this is from a commercial. I shot a commercial for um, a company based on my 60 second portraits. And if I, I don't know if I have it. Uh, yeah, I don't have it here. I've been really scaling back the work that I'm showing on my website because I'm in the middle of making a new one. But our self-directed projects can quickly become our real work. I never thought that I'd be shooting movie posters, but I always tried to shoot in such a way that one day maybe I would, you know? All of these, like my, the way that I use gels, the way that I use color, like this is all stuff that I hadn't really done much before. But once I started messing around with this light, next thing you know, I'm getting calls to shoot a movie poster and they're asking me to use that light. So, it's like personal work becomes your professional work. And it happens like really quickly. It happens really, really, really quickly. Um, you just have to really um, jump on style because you notice I have elements that I use often like smoke, the way that I use my backgrounds, the way that I like my distance, like we have to find our style elements. All right. so. Start a personal project um, and understand that your personal projects can be pitched. Once you've worked or once you've completed or have a, a large body, you can pitch your personal project to magazines and they'll run it and they'll make an article on you. And it's, it's a quick way to get famous. All right. Um, exhibitions. Participate in contests. Contests like I submitted to American Photo in 2004 and I got selected to be in American photo. So I understand like that they got 25,000 submissions and um, they published 75 photos and they published one of my photos of Cardinal. So contests, um, exhibitions, and sometimes these contests end up being exhibitions. So anytime that you get to put your, your work on the wall, do it, do it. So participate in that stuff, like putting your work in a frame, putting, blowing your work up, putting it in a frame, hanging on the wall, it gives it value and it makes it valuable for you. You need to see your work framed more. This is why I have 
framed pictures. Like, there's one over there of Colin Firth. You can't see it, but I can. Michael Sheen is over there. Back here, I have... Those are all two foot by three foot photos. Picture back there. Like, there's photos all over this place. And it's necessary. It's super necessary. <sighs> Get used to cold emails because cold emails is how you're going to be reaching out to some of these people. So pitching, um, sometimes you're pitching to people who don't know you. So cold, oops, cold emails. I love the cold email now. I used to hate it, but get used to cold emails because that's how you're going to be reaching out to people. So again, I made a video. Uh, I mean, it's a clip from one of my podcasts and it's basically five key steps to how to reach out to, and it tells you step-by-step, step, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. It's got a 90% success rate, success rate. So, um, yeah, get used to, and also re research who you should be talking to. Like what's the point person at the agency, at the brand, at the magazine. And once you have that point person, you can make a tailored pitch using my five steps. And also you'll have the work that's definitely guaranteed to impress that specific person. So yes, also there's freelance platforms. There's freelance platforms. There's all kinds of places that freelance work um, is posted. Um, Upwork, Fiverr. Um, I think that like, I think Fiverr is a little bit beneath um, where we're trying to be. Upwork, you're bidding on the work against other people. Um, but there's all kinds of industry specific job boards. Like I have um, an alert on LinkedIn set that anytime someone's looking for a photographer, like there's like a photographer job board on LinkedIn or whatever. And it's like, they're never, they never apply for me, but I like to have them and see them because I send them to Jay or send them to people who are in my network. So use those networks use like linkedin's job board set an alert for photography and anytime that that pops up in your area you might be getting that opportunity um okay collaborate we got to ramp up collaborate collaborate um emerging designers other photographers makeup artists stylists do fashion shoots like when you're collaborating, it leads to things that could go into magazines. You can collaborate on something and submit it to a magazine. Like go to trade shows, go to industry shows, go to PPA, go to Photoville, go to all of these industry shows where you can actually talk to other photographers to see what they're doing. And also a great place to meet potential clients and collaborators. Um, intern, intern, work for someone for free. That's um, genius intern try like if someone if you're trying to assist and that's not um that language is not working for you start saying i'd love to be your intern intern a photographer intern a director and be the grunt be the grunt go get coffee do whatever they need be an intern for somebody who's doing what you're trying to do and that's a quick way especially if you have skills and at some point you get to show them like yeah here's my portfolio and they're like whoa you can shoot um create a blog create a blog you hear me talk about um newsletter having a mailing list um like it goes beyond being a blog so i, I don't call it a blog anymore it's a newsletter which is basically it's not just the blog it's the place where you can go and see the blog afterwards meaning if i missed it or if i'm new and i'm not on this list how do i see them all together at once so this is why substack is great this is all the newsletters that i've ever written since I've been on this platform and they're just, they're all here. And I do it every single Saturday and I haven't missed a Saturday since I started 56 weeks ago. So all my newsletters are here. Here's the archive. Like it just, they just keep going. So understand that I started with, I literally started and I had eight people on my list and I now have 
um, almost 1,400 people on my list. You can see this particular one is monetized. I charge $5 a month to see my archives. And it's just another way. Like, it, it's, it's a great system. I can, these people are opting in. I have almost 1,400 people on my list. And I send something out consistently that brings them value. And because I'm bringing value, the list keeps growing. So you could be doing the same thing. Start a newsletter. Do it today. <clears throat> volunteer. Um, volunteer at high profile events. So imagine you're, if you're a, um, an event photographer, um, like Miss Lana has been doing a little bit, if you're volunteering at a high profile event, the networking that you can get going on at that high profile event while you're taking photos, the photos gives you an excuse to talk to people, to get cards, to network to people. And also then you can meet up with those people later, show them your other work that's non-event photography, which can lead to stuff. Unpaid gigs lead to valuable things. Like if you do the right unpaid gigs. I'm not saying shoot everything for free, but I'm saying shooting the right things for free, fast track your career. The right things. But too many people are money driven. They're poor and they're not, they, they're, they're just... They're in a place of scarcity. When you're in a place of scarcity and someone offers you 20 bucks, it's like you take the 20 bucks rather than like doing it for free, staying longer and seeing and using that free opportunity to make you make 2000 bucks. You know what I mean? So volunteer for high profile events. Engage in online communities. I've said this a couple of times, but make sure you join the Discord. The Discord is the place. There's other photographers just like you that are there that are communicating daily. There's over 700 photographers there that are communicating and sharing their wins. And hey, look at my numbers, almost at 750. And gallery shows. Try to do some stuff locally. There's cafes, there's bars, there's all kinds of pla places in your neighborhood that you could put work up on the wall and do a little mini show and sell some prints. Like make it known locally that you're doing this. Like you don't have to necessarily market only locally. I believe lo marketing globally, but um, there are things that you can do locally in order to get some reps and get you comfortable. And the last thing is, um, it works in hand in hand with the like having a blog, like writing weekly. Emailing is is a weapon and you can not just direct email, you can email blast people. You, if you have a new thing of new service, like once you have a list, those list, that list becomes your customers because your email list you own. You don't own Instagram, so you can get banned. You can get shadow banned. You can get deplatformed. You can get deplatformed from Facebook. You can get deplatformed from YouTube. You can get deplatformed from anything that you don't own. But your mailing list, you own that. So you can take your mailing list, which is a group of people who love you and support you and love your work. You can take that group of people anywhere. And you can. those people are your test group. Those people are your first customers. So cherish the mailing list and start your mailing list today you can use substack it's free i don't make money by the way by talking about substack it's a free platform you just start your own um just recommend me if you get one guys that is some industry understanding and some ways to get into the industry there's i gave you lots of different ways that you can get into the industry but know that you have to be targeted. You have to know what it is that you're trying to shoot. You have to know what value it is exactly that you bring to the industry. Because if you're not bringing value, if you're not literally moving the needle with new work, influential work, inspired, like if you're not moving the needle, then you're just creating noise. And Noise will get shut down at the front door with any advertising agency, any magazine. If you're making noise, you're going to get shut down. If you're making compelling work, you'll work for the rest of your life. So make sure you are not contributing to the noise. I hope this brought you value. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate everybody. 
I appreciate everybody who watched me live. Thank you. If you were in here live in chat while I was going through industry talk today, this episode came via special request. I asked my viewers what they would like me to talk about today in the Discord, and the, the, the overall, overall winner was industry talk, how to get into the industry, lingo, get lots of questions about industry lingo and things, terms, roles that people need to understand. So I hope this brought you value. Ricky De Silva, I'm glad you just joined my masterclass, my guy. Don't think that I don't see you. I see you. I appreciate everybody for being here. If you became a member recently, you're gonna see your name scrolling across the top of the screen, like Anton Duris, who loves to comment on my DMs on Instagram. I appreciate you guys. And also, if you became a subscriber in the last 25, you're going to see your name scrolling across the bottom. I can only show 25 in these scrolls, but my members are the reason that you guys get commercial free content when you're alive. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're in my masterclass, we have a masterclass check-in happening in 30 minutes. I'll see you there on Zoom. If you're interested in any of my pro photography education, make sure you go to thecardimethod.com. I also am giving you a free pricing guide. If you don't have my free pricing guide, make sure make sure you just go to the description of the video you're watching right now. Thanks so much.